Welcome to part three of Entwistle Power Occupational Therapy's webinar on acquired brain injury and how OTs can help in the assessment and treatment of our clients. My name is Brenda Power Ahmad, and on behalf of my business partner Julie Entwistle and I, thank you for joining us. In part one, we explained ABI and some of the symptoms that our clients experience. In part two, we looked at how OTs help with thinking strategies and the management of physical and emotional symptoms. In this section, we will be discussing the approach of the occupational therapist and looking at a case example. The occupational therapist uses a comprehensive approach, including a thorough in-home assessment where the OT can observe the client performing function in their own environment. The assessment may extend into the community, work, or school if required. The OT uses a client-centered approach, emphasizing the client's own goals. The OT directs intervention at the person, the occupation, and the environment, which converge to optimize occupational performance or function. Therapists are skilled at focusing on the person environment, occupation environment, and person occupation dynamics using a holistic approach with a goal to enhance function. For example, interventions may focus on adapting the environment, modifying the task, teaching a new school, or education provided to the client or the family. Ideally, the OT continues to remain involved in the client's care until their occupational performance goals have been met. Throughout this process, the OT continues to evaluate outcomes and to ensure that the client is managing important activities of daily living over the short term and the long term. This will be demonstrated in an example in the following slides. So, for our example, there is a 60-year-old female client involved in a motor vehicle collision with loss of consciousness at the scene. In addition to her head injury, she sustained additional injuries including liver lacerations, right adrenal contusion, mononeuropathy of the lower limb, vertigo, anxiety when traveling as a passenger, and depressive episode. The occupational therapy role is comprehensive and begins with a thorough in-home functional and personal care or attended care needs assessment and form one in the automobile insurance world, including a medical file review and consultation with any current treatment providers. During this assessment, it was determined that the client required a 24-hour level of care per day due to combined physical, cognitive, and psychological symptoms impacting her safety and her ability to complete her activities of daily living. The OT coordinated a personal support worker to provide care for basic ADLs. The client's functional goals were discussed uh, from the outset with the client and their family and then coordinated with the entire rehabilitation team. These goals included to increase functional independence with pre-accident self-care routine, to resume housekeeping and cooking tasks, to participate in prior or new leisure interests and hobbies, to improve ability to access the community safely and independently, to eventually resume work as a general laborer, which was a long-term goal, and to improve comfort with traveling as a passenger. The OT is skilled at ensuring goals are manageable and realistic while breaking down the steps to optimize achievement of goals in a progressive manner from simple to complex over the short and the long term. A careful assessment of goals provided the basis for OT treatment, which was then provided through treatment and strategies aimed at minimizing barriers to progress towards these goals, including physical, cognitive, and psychological challenges. External memory aids and cognitive compensatory strategies were provided to minimize the client's cognitive challenges, including use of a large whiteboard calendar, use of a medication dosset, and a memory notebook for lists and routines. A number of tasks or activities were also incorporated into this client's routine to target some of the cognitive domains of function, including working memory games using picture cards, Therapeutic knitting was also explored as an activity to, tar to target laterality, coordination, cognitive skills, and emotional benefits as a distraction from her pain and meaningful outcomes. Equipment and assistive devices were recommended and reviewed regularly to reduce barriers impacting occupational performance, including 
use of a toilet frame or versa frame, a handheld shower head, a grab bar, supportive chair, and the use of a lifeline service. As the client was at a high risk for falls and was unable to get up from the floor independently. Fine motor tasks were encouraged to facilitate recovery and engagement in functional movement patterns through the use of tools including clothespins and therapeutic. Activities were incorporated that simulate or reproduce actions similar to her pre-injury work at a factory. Education was provided to the client and her family on a regular basis regarding pain, cognitive symptoms, fatigue, and the interaction of all of these symptoms. Education was also provided on methods of reducing falls risk due to her balance difficulties during functional tasks, such as bath transfers. Sleep hygiene habits were also reviewed. Transportation methods were explored to assist the client with accessing necessary community activities. An application was completed for the Disabled and Aged Regional Transportation System, otherwise known as DARTS, which is a nonprofit charitable organization that provides transit services here in Hamilton, as the client was unable to use public transportation due to her balance and mobility issues. In consultation with a the physiotherapist, she practiced use of the service with her personal support worker to attend the clinic for client-based physiotherapy using strategies that were devised by the OT for her passenger anxiety and difficulties. As one of this client's main goals was resuming cooking tasks, a kitchen assessment was completed by the OT with specific supports and strategies and cognitive cues implemented based on the challenges presented. For example, it was suggested that the client break the task into smaller, more manageable steps and identify aspects of the task that can be completed in advance by family members. It was also suggested that the client plan to participate in the task based on the best time of day and mental resources available to her. Use of a perching stool eliminated unnecessary efforts as she was able to sit while chopping vegetables, for example. Also, organizing the space in advance to keep required items in easily accessible locations, gathering all of the supplies before starting, and building rest breaks, breaks into the activity helped. Finally, it was suggested that the client start with a less complex recipe and gradually increase the physical and cognitive demands of the task. These strategies allowed the client to be successful with cooking again. Due to memory deficit, throughout treatment, a recipe book was created to organize recipes with picture cues. Finally, the OT role also included incorporated coping and relaxation strategies for the client's anxiety particularly as it related to traveling as a passenger and walking as a pedestrian. Specifically, deep breathing, use of distraction, and positive mantras. These strategies were practiced in session with the OT. As you can see by this example, the OT uses a comprehensive client-centered approach guided by the client's own functional goals. Throughout the OT intervention, the OT assesses the client's progress using specialized assessment measures such as the COPM or the Canadian Occupational Performance Measure. In this example, the client demonstrated a wide range of functional outcomes. And these included uh, she had increased independence with her pre-accident self-care routine. For example, the ability to use the toilet independently using the toilet frame. She also experienced increased independence with housekeeping and cooking tasks using the cognitive compensatory strategies that we discussed and by modifying the task. She was able to participate in new leisure interests and hobbies. She particularly enjoyed knitting using an adaptive needle and was able to knit a number of items for her grandchildren that year. This client also demonstrated the ability to access the community safely using the accessible transportation system that was set up for her. She reported improved comfort traveling as a passenger using some of the strategies that we uh, discussed with her for passenger anxiety.
It was determined, however, that due to many of her permanent physical and cognitive deficits, she would be unfortunately unable to resume working as a general laborer working on a line. The OT assisted her to explore other vocational options that were within her current capability, considering her future prognosis and work values, her interests, and her skills. The OT remained involved in this client's care until her occupational performance goals were fully met. So here you'll find a list of uh, some of the references that we use in the creation of this webinar and feel free to check them out at your leisure. Thank you for joining me for today's webinar on acquired brain injury and how occupational therapists can help our clients. If you're interested in learning more about Entwistle Power Occupational Therapy, please feel free to follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and check us out on Facebook. We also have a very helpful blog which you can access on our website, entwistlepower.com. Check us out on YouTube. We have developed an OTV video series where we share some great OT solutions for living. We have also created an AODA customer service training program, which is the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. And ask us how we can help you become better than just compliant with the AODA legislation.